This is it, what? Fettuccine with the team, we gettin' lit, what? Got it rolled up, now who really tryna hit, one? Puff, puff, then we pass, then we pass, then we pass. Black magic, baby. Dun, 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 dun. Fam. Yo. Happy summer, man. Happy like, what's up with summer. you? You got a nice, like, bronze glow, like your tan you skin. the bronze? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? What? Five, <laughs> five? Bitches a ten? This this couch hasn't seen a lot of action this summer. You've been floating and boating. Bro. Traveling and dabbling. My God, Roski. I'm glad you noticed the Dipping brownness. and tripping. I love it. I, I love it. I definitely was trying to Listen. put on the melanin extra thick out this bitch. Ooh, extra thick. <laughs> Yeah. You know I like an extra thing. I know you do. We're going to discuss this. Listen, man, we got to... What, what's been going on? It's, it's been a lot going on. It's been a lot going on. I think we have some catching up to do because I feel we, like I haven't seen you, but I oh, I, you outside and we both been outside. It's been a, it's been a little hiatus. Shh. We just had a little bit of a hiatus, a little summer hiatus. But we didn't go away because we still was working. You know what I'm saying? Of course. We always we working. Still, we still here. We well, still. I mean, you know, it's it's reality-based content. Indeed. So what we go through, what we listen to, what we absorb, we come back and we digest it and regurgitate it to the audience in a form that they can, you know what I mean? I believe so. It's Black palatable. Magic, baby. It's palatable. Listen, listen. It's your man, Earth Tone. Hey, your man, the real peasy holding you down with the right dose of the highest notes. Black me, me, Magic, me, me, baby. Me, 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 me. Highest notes. Because you know when you got to warm up the voice, mm. you got to... <clears throat> listen. Make sure you get your calamine tea. We, we could get... We get the... I said calamine tea. The calamine. It's chamomile. The chamomile. The calamine we lotion. Get, right. Calamine... From mosquito mm-hmm. bites. Mm-hmm. You know as, what long I'm as long as it's not calamari lotion. What's calamari lotion? <sighs> you don't want to know. Fried calamari? Ooh, calamari. All right, so we're we, we going to get back to that story because that sounds get, intriguing. We're going we're gonna to double back on that. All right, let's double back on it. So what we... <laughs> What kind of venture we gonna take them on this time? Are we are we getting to the the music? We getting right to the micro segments? Like how you feeling? Like cause it's th- it's up in the air at this point. It's definitely up in the you air. You know what I'm saying? We getting the fall started. It's almost cuffing season. But if you have not noticed the attire that we bring <laughs> forth, you know what I'm saying? This is definitely micro segment. I see. Situation. I mean, I thought I was doing something, but I mean, Man, you over here bringing the because we got a lot to discuss. We got a lot to discuss okay, out okay, here okay. in these streets. Okay. And we're just going to start it off, you know what I'm saying, with the fact that it's been a hectic summer. It has. But we did get a chance to link up. We definitely did. We did get a chance to have a little bit of a bonding excursion experience. And there was a lot to celebrate. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but there's a festival that exists. It is called Hancho Camp Out. Mm. It is brought to you by the guys that DJ as Hancho mm-hmm. for the club nowadays, which is located in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. It's an excellent venue. Mm-hmm. And the trip that we went on is very much catered to the full spectrum of the LGBTQ community, the Q plus community that we know and love and serve and are proud to be part of absolutely and sometimes you know we need a little bit of space where we could be our fullest selves and unfortunately out here in these streets it's not always available no so what they these guys apparently did is they put together this whole festival where you go to the woods in the middle of bumfuck Pennsylvania. Middle. 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 Right really close Appalachians. to- Appalachia, definitely Appalachia. Right on, close to the border of Maryland. Mm-hmm. Maryland and VA. Maryland, it's like a little trifecta. Maryland, oh, Maryland and- It's Maryland, yeah. It's Maryland and Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And it's basically a dance festival. So we go out and the nowadays DJs, Honcho, the Honcho DJs, they go out, a whole team of them, put together a whole situation where you just can have the experience of just being queer, being alive, loving yourself, loving each other. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it they was setting a up a whole a natural environment. Natural just setting up to be habitated it's, by 
a bunch of people that want to dance, love on each other, enjoy themselves. And just be their fullest selves yeah. without no bother, without no worry about Crazy. anything. It's really quite magical. You and your partner had told me about this festival, I mm -hmm. think sometime last year. Yep. And when y'all said that, I was kind of hooked, but I wasn't really sure. Yes. And then y'all said y'all was going to go. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't been at that point. You had not been. So it was both of our first time going. Mm -hmm. Once I finally committed, you know what I'm saying? Because it's quite a bit of a commitment. It is. Uh, but we went this year. It was during August, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Right in the middle of August, we went. And when we went out there, you went out there kind of for, to to enjoy the landscape, but you also had another agenda. Yeah, I yeah. heard. I had a mission. I was you on had a mission. a mission. So talk about this I was mission, on a of a mission that you had us on. Yeah, so I mean, I'm, I knew for a few months now that I wanted to uh, go ahead and pop the the old question. You know what I'm saying? So, um, well, wait my, a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. For the people that might not know the whole situation, Talk to us about who we popping the questions well, to. That, I, yeah, absolutely. Shout out to my baby at three years now. Mm -hmm. um, Tom, wherever you are. Actually, he's mm -hmm. at Burning Man. So get this. He's mm -hmm. one of maybe 15, 12 to 15 people in the world who have done Honcho and Burning Man in the same year because they occur pretty much the following week apart from each other. So it's, it's talk about Honcho being tough to get to mm -hmm. and, you know, bring everything, do what you got to do. And get through that festival, but let alone you want to do that and then go to Burning Man afterwards. Yo. So this is who I just, you know, I, I proposed to. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's 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 been a bit of a journey. It's been a beautiful, amazing experience. I decided I wanted to do it somewhere special. I wanted to make it memorable. And um, you know, like you said, you heard him talk about it, you've heard me talk about it, you've heard other people that we know who've been talk about the festival and you know, it's it's always a, a twinkle in their eye. They always speak with such, you know, vigor and magic. And everybody was excited when they heard that we were going. I knew I wanted to do it there. I knew it was going to be a lot of our close friends there at the same time who would be able to celebrate the occasion with us. Um, and I decided to do it, man. I wanted to do it early on because it's a five-day festival. You go out there, it's mm -hmm. about five hours from the city. Um, we drove out there. <clears throat> And it's pretty much camping. It's a it's a camping music festival. Yes. Um, two big dance floors in the middle of the woods, right next to a creek, up and down hills. I mean, you're talking about forest terrain, microclimate. Um, it's it's what about twenty six, twenty five hundred people. Um, so it was a bit of a it was a bit of a jam. Um, and I and I did it earlier in the festival. I think I did it on that Friday. We got there Wednesday. Um, and it was a magical moment and, you know, we got to do the little champagne toast and he had no idea what's going to happen. And, and here we are. I'm, I'm coming back to the podcast and engaged man. You know what I mean? Listen. So that's, and I'm, and I'm so glad that you were able to come out and make the trek with the kid. Cause I wasn't sure when I was telling you about it, I, I didn't know if you was going to go. For one, I didn't know you was going to go. And then for two, if you was going to go, I wasn't sure. If you was going to have a good time and be able to, you know, sink your teeth in the way I would have liked you to. Bro, but bro, I mean, I was so honored that you even asked me to go like as you were doing this, like I already made up my mind that I was going to go. And, you know, I just had to like get myself emotionally mm -hmm. and physically get your mind right. ready, get my mm -hmm. mind right. Exactly. Yep. To, to go. <laughs> but I don't regret the experience. Not one bit. I don't know if y'all see the twinkle in my eye <laughs> because that experience was so, it was so, so much to talk about. Yeah. So like it was, it was definitely a camp and we went and did now. Okay. Part of the festival is that it's, it's a bit of a financial commitment, but there is a program that they have for those who can't make that financial commitment. Mm -hmm. They kind of open the spectrum up, and I think that is so awesome that they kind of look out for that. So they have the QFF, the Queer, Queer Family, Family Fund. Fund. Yep, exactly, and that is the one where you know if you if you want to go and your friends are going or whatever the case may be, you can submit your name and you can um, you know solicit get donations from other people who are paying full packages to go. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of really, that's 
that's really like the extent that they go to kind of do inclusiveness yeah. for the whole thing. Because, you know, to be honest with you, you know, the festival could get a little bit, you know, a little bit one shaded, you know yeah. what I'm saying? A lot yeah. of a lot of light skin, a lot of white folks there. Yeah, not absolutely. really too much melanin happening, but they want to make sure that they everybody is included because the spectrum is just full of so many yeah. beautiful people. Everybody deserves this experience. Yeah, they want to make it accessible to all corners of the community. Indeed, you know what I mean? Indeed. Which has to be intentful. Like it's easier and, yep. to say that, but you yeah. have to, you know, go out of your way and be intentful about making it happen. And they definitely do that. And that was one thing that kind of struck me because I I'm going there and you know I if y'all don't know I'm disabled like I have a condition that kind of prevents me from doing things physically to the fullest extent but I definitely am still outside it's just I'm kind of a little bit limited about what I can do mm-hmm. and even while I was there <laughs> the extent that they looked out for me to make sure Man. me and other people who had canes and were walking around yeah. like getting their life as well the extent that they go through to kind of make everybody feel comfortable and can get around because you got to understand that this is campsite is how many acres 200 it's, some acres it's, it's a lot of acres it's a big it's it's a, acreage it's, like you gotta walk you gotta definitely one walk. dance floor is it's a trek like going to the the other side of the 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 land it's yeah. You gotta walk. You gotta walk across a suspended bridge. Right, right. Across the creek. And then you gotta take another walk from there. Two whole dance floors. One of them is called Hemlock Hole. Mm -hmm. And the other one is called The The Grove. Grove. Mm -hmm. And between them, you know, you gotta walk through several pathways and walk across that suspended bridge. Yeah. And if you can't walk across that bridge, you're gonna have to take one of the golf carts and one of the staff will take you around the campsite across the creek Mm -hmm. to get you to the other side. Yeah. That's how immense it's just it's a big is. place it's a big place but it's so much to see it's, it's so much beautiful to and it's crazy walk like walking around the size of it is part of the experience it is it is and they <clears> decorate <throat> it they make sure they like have these sites that you know they have sites for people who are they're sober they're sites for people who are kind of just looking for other experiences other than just dancing mm-hmm. they have uh different programming that they have going where there's you know, talks uh, that you can do. Uh, there's, there's a couple of talks that I talked to, that I was, you know, part of. One of them talked about like death, how we deal with death. Um, some of them uh, was some of them. There was a Reiki master there that led a sound bath, and I went in part of the sound sa- part of the sound bath, and that was a magical experience mm-hmm. because the sound bath happened in a part of the park that they set up called a circle of whispers and it's a beautiful really surreal kind of alien setup that they have it's just you know they have like <clears throat> flag like what do you call them things like flags yeah kind of like flags and banners and, banners and yeah. shit like that that kind of glowed in the dark yeah. they have lighting all around they it. really paid attention to the aesthetic yeah. shout out to Hugh too who kind of yeah. oversaw all of the programming like oh during my God. that space yeah. Shout so, out to Hugh. Yeah. And shout out to everybody, the whole staff. They made it a real magical experience. Yeah, man. So like it was it's like otherworldly. It's futuristic and it's ancient at the same time because there's all all of this talk about um just honoring the uh indigenous people that once lived on that land, mm. on that same land that they're using to, you know, build to put this festival on. A lot of a lot of time and energy was good, just was built just giving it up. It was great. It was was great. Yeah. I can't say enough good things about wow. it. And then the music, like the music, the dancing, the people, the looks, the energy, the vibes, like you just see so many different types of people all enjoying, you know, themselves. They had a ball. Um, they had it a was, ball. It was it was a lot going on, man. The, speaking of the looks, <clears throat> this is one of the looks that I wore to the festival because mm. you know the whole they encourage you to just dress as your full self, whatever you want to dress in, as, as creative sexy as you want it to be, yeah. mm-hmm. as creative as slutty as you want to be. Bitch was outside with the silver moonlight mm-hmm. lipstick. Mm-hmm. You already know I was moving it forward because we represent for the nine nine and the three thousand out here. Hey. So you know, I just wanted to show you that this is what was going on. And like, 
Yo, is thank you, thank you again for just having me with you. Yeah. Congratulations on of your course. engagement. Thank you, man. You it's, a, it's an exciting time. I'm, definitely, I'm, we definitely got, we definitely like shared a lot of good moments. Absolutely. And I think I have seen, <clears throat> I think I've seen uh, many, many, many more sides of you mm. than I ever dreamed that I would. <laughs> but um, uh-huh. y'all, everything you see here is just a little bit of it. There's a, a lot bit, more. There's a lot more. There's a lot more. There's just a lot know more. there's so much just more. Know huh? There's so much more to explore. Uh, All right? You know what I'm saying? Because I've seen some things. Just get a little taste. There's you know a lot of saying? debauchery going on out hey, there. And I have seen some things. And I know some things. And hey. I ain't going to tell your business. Hey, man. But uh, I'm Listen, glad you, have, you was having fun. It, right? it was a space to have fun, be fancy free. You know what I'm saying? Live your life. Black boy joy and all of that. Black boy joy. Yeah, it was, it was a good old time, man. Shout out to all of the friends and you know the people who became family um over the course of that period and before that like it's it's just a it's a magical experience shout out to the honcho, honcho team um mm-hmm. they actually based uh trio based from uh pittsburgh i think that's where they started yeah, yeah, the first yeah, couple yeah. of uh parties were you know based out of pittsburgh they actually still run the honcho party um, it's like a sauna, like a f- four-story sauna. They got wow. like, throw the party out there. It's crazy. I want to get out to it, but um, yeah, they've been doing the camp. I think this is the ninth year they're doing the Hancho yes, camp. Yeah, so next year is gonna be the. I decade. mean, we both said this was our first year. Yep, we both yep. said we'd be back. Um, it's definitely you know it's it's one of those once in a lifetime experiences that you want to do. I you mean, definitely want to do it. You definitely want to get yourself out to it. <clears throat> look up, look it up. I think it's Hanjo dot, Hancho.com. Honchocampout.com. Honchocampout.com. Yeah. And just sign up for the mailing list and, you know, go follow them on Instagram. I think it's Hancho Campout at Hancho Campout. Yeah, at Hancho Campout. Don't get me wrong, but if you Google, look up Hancho Campout, yeah, it'll come yeah. up. It'll definitely come up. Yeah. And you'll see all the social media. Look it out for yourself. We definitely highly recommend it. Mm-hmm. We'll be back for the decade celebrate the celebration next year. We are, I think we already signed Ooh, up. Oh yeah, that's gonna be big. It's, I think it's definitely gonna be damn, big. Damn, you know they're gonna year. try to go. I know. Extra hard. That's damn, why I didn't even think about that. Oh, yep, shit. that's All why right. I was saying we gotta start playing. <laughs> right. So this is what it's gonna be. Okay. Um, one of the last things that happened while we were at Hancho before we like move forward, we were talking about our um, birth charts. Because Ooh. we were talking to one of the one of the campers, and that kind of came up, and um, we was vibing that night too. It that was, was definitely like an interesting it was, convo. We was like the last night. It was the last night. It was the last. Mm-hmm. It was it was definitely tops. Mm-hmm. So one of the, one of the things we were talking about with the campers is just our signs. And it comes up, it comes up a lot in the community. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. And I'm some an, people live by it. Like, they definitely live by it. Um, I'm an Aries. My man Earth Tone here is a Leo. Big Leo energy. But, you know, when we're talking about astrology charts, for <clears> those <throat> of you out there, y'all might be familiar with how it goes. You have the sun sign, you have the major three. So the sun sign, the ascendant, or the rising sign, and the moon sign. That's the one everybody spits out at you, you know what I'm saying, when they first talk about astrology, those who are in those who are like really invested in it. Mm. I'm kind of invested in it. I'm curious more than anything. Okay, So okay. I do a lot of research on it, but I'm not gonna overload you, but I'll just tell you this. I'm an Aries, sun, cancer rising. Cancer's rising, or the rising sign is usually how the world sees you. Okay. The sun sign is how you see the world. Mm-hmm. And then the moon sign is generally your inner self, like how your inner self portrays itself to you okay so um my ri- my rising sign like i said is cancer my moon sign is leo interesting exactly interesting exactly so <laughs> exactly there it is <laughs> yours so as i pull up your star chart your of course your sun sign leo mm-hmm. rising pisces mm. and so let me tell you i know a lot about pisces <laughs> I okay, I don't know a ton about, about Pisces. Pisces. Put me on. Put you me on. You don't know. You don't know a lot about. Pisces. I mean, I you don't know have, a little you bit. Have, you have you have Pisces people around you. Yes, and one of my best friends is Pis- Pisces. Is February right? February, uh, mid February to mid March. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Actually, yeah, I got a couple Pisces. And one of my ex was a Pisces. I, I do. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you said that. Mm. I'm glad, definitely so. But you don't have that's a, interesting. But you don't have a lot of Piscean energy. 
I don't around you. No. Okay. No. I do. Okay. Mother, sister, a lot of family members. The last person I dated was a Pisces. Okay. So I kind of feel like if I'm seeing you, if I like if I'm getting to know you, like some of the traits of the Pisces are very kind of emotional, kind of in tune with themselves. Mm. Um, you know, kind of emotional, very friendly, talkative people, but they very also to themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and just they care about nature. They care about the earth. Mm. They care about people. Mm. They're empathetic people. A lot of them are empaths. Interesting. Those are the those are the things I've seen about Pisces. And Interesting. you definitely fit the bill, <laughs> at least to me, the way you present yourself to me. Mm-hmm. Because the fact that you like invited me to something like Hancho and you cared about my experience mm-hmm. there and you kind of, you know, had your friends involved, um, you had your, your, your partner involved, kind of making me feel at home. That's, you know, very empathetic of yeah. you. Like those are the traits. That's kind of how you present. And wow. you, you always kind of been that way. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the traits, a little bit in wow. a nutshell. Wow, interesting, interesting. There okay, it is. okay, mm-hmm. okay. So, that's so what was what was the third one? What the was th- my the third one? The is the is the moon sign. So this is your inner self. Your moon sign is Taurus. Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm gonna just read a little bit from. Ooh, that's interesting. Your star chart. What it says about people with Taurus moons, because hmm. I'm not necessarily an expert, but I did pull the star chart. Okay, and I have a little bit here. Okay, let so me hear. It. So it says the Taurus warmth, comfort, security, and familiar surroundings are necessary for you to feel at ease. Very loving and affectionate, you prefer a steady, patterned way of life. Patient, calm, steadfast, you are not easily upset. Others look to you for support. You tend to be a slow starter and a slow mover. Others may try to rush you, but they will never succeed. Emotionally, you are quite stubborn. Your attitudes about people and things are firmly set in your youth and will change very little as an adult. Mm. You are also very cautious and conservative about spending money. It is not that you are selfish. You just need to feel secure. Beware of a tendency to become overly complacent and too self-satisfied. Mm. How does that jive with you? Damn, that hit like all types of notes. <laughs> like I was like, he just like just just barring me out. Mm. Like, wow. Mm. All of that was resonating. That's crazy. This is all that resonates with yes, you. Yes. So very much so. So that's on your star chart. So Damn. Yeah. I didn't read it. So you want me to read your Pisces? The, yeah, read the Pisces. The Pisces rising sign. Wow. That Taurus was like, wow. Let me make sure. We're still good. All right. Pisces rising sign. Very sensitive to your surroundings. Other people's feelings become your feelings. Mm. Try to avoid negative people because your tendency to empathize with them will make you negative also. Mm. An idealist, you must believe in something beyond your normal everyday existence. A dreamer, you like to escape to a world of your own creation. As such, you are known for the vividness of your imagination and should try to share your inner visions with others. Very self-sacrificial by nature. Beware of others becoming overly dependent on you or vice versa. Mm. Allow yourself to live for yourself once in a while. You deserve it. Don't be so envious of those who are more aggressive than you your gentle charity and true humility are indeed wonderful gifts Mm. on the 10th house cusp whoa damn yeah that's kind of wild like yeah listen you dropping science and knowledge and all of that right now yes so it's it's interesting just to kind of hear you read back a lot of that and just you know think about you know the way i am Mm -hmm. the way i think I am and then as opposed to the way people might view me Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I get a glimpse of that kind of you know just in my day to day 9 to 5 we have like reviews and you know mid year reviews in year reviews and you get feedback from people who work with you on a daily basis that you know you might not necessarily deep dive and talk and you know get any deeper than you know surface small talk with them right so you never really get to the nitty gritty of how they might feel for you but if you 
ask somebody and poke and pry, you get a little deeper information. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You might be surprised at what people, you know, think or how they see you. And then the way you kind of try to portray yourself and then the way you actually are, like all of these are different things. We're complex human beings. We still have, you know, our upbringings and our surroundings that we grew out of. Like a, a, a tree can only grow as much as its soil and the minerals that's in the soil that it grows out of. Absolutely, you know what I'm saying? So absolutely. you can only be but so much outside of your surroundings and your beginning. So all of that stuff kind of, you know, you are who you are, but then you also grow into a certain person. Absolutely. So we complex human beings. We got this person that we want to be, the person that we actually are, and then the person that people kind of see us or the reflection that we give off. That's kind of dope. So do some of your coworkers tell you some of these, do some of these things yeah. jive? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, it's wild. I appreciate that, man. Of Thank course, you for that. That's, that's dope. That's like on another level. That's the type of shit that I like. Cause you know, like another thing that resonated, like you said, I needed, I need to believe in something, you know, like a higher cause or higher purpose yeah, or higher yeah, being yeah. or something like that. Like that's another thing. Like I've always been like not religious or just kind of in tune with a, a organized, you know, kind of based community or way of thinking, but. It's always been that sense of like some kind of spirituality or something out there, like something else. You know I, what would, I mean, not that you could pinpoint it, but it's something else going on, bro. So definitely, when you go through your star chart, so the thing about it is, each you the sun is in a certain place when you uh, when you're born. Mm. So is the moon, and so are all the other planets. That makes sense. So just to give you a little overview, if you you know, see the star chart, you'll see that there's going to be a sign that each of the planets were at when you were born. Mm. So it'll outline. So all you got to do is what I've been doing for the past week or so is seeing my Mercury is in Aries. Google what does Mercury in Aries mean in your birth chart. Mm. And then you'll get all of the and data. You get all the down. science. Okay. And if you have the AI on your on your on your browser, the AI is gonna put all of that information together for you anyway. If you I love that because that was I always had like a slight, you know, hesitation towards just fully grasping the idea of yeah. you know astrology and believing in the signs and, and especially as much as our community try to feed it down your throat or it becomes exactly. such a dating thing yeah, like oh you yeah. a Pisces my ex was yeah, a Pisces right, and right, blah, 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 blah. like shut and up and it's just like, and it's, 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 and it's like we way more complex than that like yeah are. certain things that resonate me from a Leo but hearing you breaking it down like that and divvying it up and seeing how it's much more you know it makes more sense that way for sure and you could just do you could just dip your toe in it's not even for you to go real deep because we could talk about you houses just keep going deep and deep, you yeah. could just keep going deep and you don't need to and i'm not trying to go that deep. yeah i mean so we're gonna keep it just a little bit like that you already know keep it cur- we're gonna keep it cute okay um we're gonna move on to the we, we jump right into the streets we did i we love did. it we did Come on that's now. how we gotta do we outside let's we've go been in these let's go it's been a busy so uh out of this world if y'all don't know is the grand tour by missy mr mina wow. elliott wow with openers with an s openers timberland buster rhymes mm. and sierra C-C. so she went on i think maybe a two, a two month long tour it started in the 4th of July and you already know as soon as she said tour I had to go I had to make sure I was gonna get them dates locked in and uh, fortunately, there are enough people out there that know me and know my affinity for the misdemeanor mm. that want to make sure that I go see her. So that's what happened. My sisters and their friend bought them tickets and they definitely invited little brother wow. to come through with them at Hampton Coliseum. So Missy is from the 757 Hampton Roads area. That's Southeast Virginia, Norfolk, Newport News, Virginia Beach, mm. Suffolk, uh, Chesapeake, that area. So Hampton, part of the 757 is where her, her show was for that area. And Hampton Coliseum is where her show was and that's where we went. It was actually 
on your man's birthday. My birthday, the day. The day, August 2nd. Yeah. And I threw the invitation I know, out there for I you. Know. I wanted you to come through because she wasn't going to come to New York until like the I week know. of her show. We yeah. had a lot of prep. That would have been perfect too. What, yeah, a, what a birthday. Yeah. Damn. That show though was definitely lived up to its title out of this world man if you know missy Elliott, you already know how futuristic her music has been her ideas the show was nothing less she really did have a real whole spaceship inside the fucking stadium that's crazy it was a virtual spaceship but she definitely created the experience of you being out of this world and everybody came in decked out with yeah. their finest out of this world futuristic garb because you know I did <laughs> I had to ice out the glasses Damn. I had to make sure I got the deep v-neck I saw situation. the clips I saw the video I'm like he really really man he put his foot in the water I couldn't wait I, I feel like that's wait. been like a recent not a recent but a more as of late like picked up a trend as far as the concert go was really digging into and leaning into these looks, absolutely. These costumes, it's these the outfits, time. these get ups, it's like the, the Beyonce shows, be. like yeah, it's they really, really going in. The Beyonce thing that I think that's what inspired my outfit was the fact that I couldn't even go to the Beyonce mm. concert, so I just was like, I'm gonna just do what I would have did there because mm. it was mostly a silver. It was gray. definitely given silver. It was it was it was that. So I wanted to. Bring now just made it futuristic, yeah. you know, with some of the accessories That's dope, man. that I had. I, I love it. I had the spikes. I had it everything. I had it all. Killing. And the show was like the only time you really gonna interact with these artists like in person, yeah. unless you're lucky enough to meet them. That's the other part, and that's the experience like they that they bring. Still in the same building, y'all yeah. in the same building. So we bring in the they bring in the experience to us. You want to be part of it as much as you can, and I and I don't know when Missy is going to be on tour again. <laughs> though she did say like after it was over, like. She loved doing it And she's gonna make sure She's gonna do another one So you already know I'm there But if she takes it overseas Bro My passport is you might, ready <laughs> You ready might. And I'm gonna do the redux You we ready to make go? it happen Damn I think my passport Actually might be expiring next year I gotta look at my joint might make sure you Damn renew that, that's renew crazy that sucker. Renew that I need sucker. to get on it now Yeah right you get now. it now yep. Okay alright well, For what, sure What else is going on in You been Man, it's a lot going on. It's a lot. That's a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and just give you some of the newest music releases that I kind of been checking into. Okay. And it's a few out there. Shout out to Megan Thee Stallion, the ally. Ah. Okay. So Megan is the title of the album. Love the love what she's doing. Love the album. Hate that cover. That cover where she looked like she crawling out of a dinosaur egg and it's got goo oh. all over her. I'm not feeling Is that supposed to be like a reference point. to like snake and I think so. His... She's like a reptile. Yeah. I don't know what the hell is going on. <sighs> I really am kind of confused with the art direction. Why? What, what she's doing. I know she's independent now, so I'm feeling like this is kind of her idea. Okay. Not really doing it for me. Mm. I get the hiss because that's the single. That was the you know yeah singer, that was like the street single the lead yeah and you was doing the whole thing dissing Nicki yeah. and making that a moment and you did that yeah but the songs are good but I don't know about the art direction mm. and all that. I'm just saying okay but check out Megan I mean, I, I don't know I didn't really listen to it that crazy but I did a little breeze through. Man. It's all right. I like it. It's it's Megan Thee Stallion yeah. kind of typical fan bad bitch yeah. shit. You know, yeah. you already know bad bitch rap. I'm kind of a fan. I love Meg. I'm, I and, I'm, and I'm kind of rooting for her yeah, because she's like, kind of not. Had I it feel easy. bad. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, I don't know. Had it's, it it's a little un, un, unfair how they do women in the industry. Yeah, and, it's a nasty tasty. It's just, it's just, a nut, it's just this is the just the generation for the type of shit that would happen to her. Like it's just another version of what. What happened, like to Foxy? You know, yeah. What I'm saying? It's like why she get shot and get no support. It exactly, was weird. Like, exactly. The and then this weird. guy's like taking Tori's side when she obviously in the video. Anyway, it's weird. Shout out to Megan. Congratulations on the album, Vanessa Williams. What? <laughs> What's she doing? Vanessa Williams got an album out. I just album? To she got an album out. She hasn't Whoa. put out an album in over a decade. This Whoa. is the same Vanessa Williams that was once Miss Black America. Uh, you know, it was, it was a rumor in my family woman. for a while that she was our cousin. Bro, <laughs> is she your cousin? You might want to get on know. the phone. You I might, might want to get on like the phone. Uh, what is it, 23 her, daughter. her daughter's 23 lying to me. me. 
Her daughter's Lion Babe. Lion Babe is her daughter? The, the I think woman. we had the same. We did, yeah. We had the same. Uh, she, we had a we yeah, had on we the show. Reviewed. Yes, we did. We, we did. Her. And her daughter is one half of Lion Babe. So, yeah. Oh, shit. So, and she's on the album. So, they did a song called Bop. And it's cute with Trixie Mattel, one of the dra- uh, you know. I know Trixie. Yeah, Trixie. Yeah, right. They just dropped the coloring book. Shout out to uh, my ex town. <laughs> Shout out. I didn't know that. Yeah. That I, I want a whole, like, Albatross did a, like a little promo joint for it and all of that. Shout out to Trixie Mattel. Yes. She's on Vanessa Williams' album. Vanessa Williams' album. Interesting. If you don't know, if she's a huge ally, like from birth, basically, she's always been around the community. She's always been around people. And she's even lost friends to the AIDS mm. crisis that was, you know, prevalent in the mid 80s and the early 90s. Yeah. So she's always been supportive and kind of like always. Uh, thrown her hat in and she even uh, did a, a letter a wrote a love letter to the community in 2017 kind of expressing her deep ties to the community oh wow um, $20,000 to the Trevor Project which is the 24-7 nonprofit for LGBTQ youth every LGBTQ youth suicide prevention mm. so shout out to Vanessa come Williams on V Will you already know let's go and last but not least, shout out to NLE Chopper. Yo. Now. Yo. <laughs> now. Yo. Now. <laughs> <laughs> NLE Chopper is a cutie and a half, first of all. Let's put that out there. Second of all, from Memphis. You know what I'm saying? Yes. From the lineage of Juicy J, 36 Mafia. La Chad Gangsta Boo. Yo Gotti. Uh, Yo Gotti. Glorilla. Glorilla. <laughs> that, you know, those folks, that neck of the woods. So for somebody to come out, and this, it, it shouldn't even be this way where, like, we obsessing over straight guys that be allies, but it is what it is. Like, he I mean, announced that's just, his I feel like that's just always going to be a thing. In I think community. it is going to be always be a thing. But, you know, we just want to definitely shout out him for his allyship and his willingness to promote his song, Slut Me Out, part uh-huh. two. Hey. At a pride name. You and hey. I hope that happens because I might be there. Slut me out. He's been leaning into that uh, for a minute. Like I've been seeing little things he's been doing here and here, mm-hmm. little comments he's been making, which I love because it's like you're comfortable in your own skin. He is who he is, clearly. Indeed, and you indeed. know, he makes his music, he has sex symbols and all that. The girls go crazy for, for him. sure. And he lean into his shit. Like he don't care. He like to dance, he like to feel he good. He doing it. And I love it. I it's, like seeing them young boys that got the confidence in I shit love like that. seeing the young boys like that. The vegan celibate Lord Praising announcing his allyship. So definitely shout out to you and Ali Chopper we thank you for the love and for sure appreciate you know, that man for shout real. out we, need, shout we out. need more of that and the streets been busy but that's about it that's all I'm gonna all hit right, you alright I mean that's a lot that's a mouthful it is it to is. say the least I hope Y'all got it. We definitely wanted to make sure y'all got y'all a little fit. Listen, man, the summer the summer only come around once a year, so you got to sink your teeth in and live it how you get it. And Mm -hmm. we damn sure did that. So, you know what? After all of that, I could use a little little puff puff, a little smoking session. In the the smoking smoking section. Damn, it's been a minute. We're glad to have it back. Come on Let's now, go. and Let's you go. see we on jerks. We got our rolling papers today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We out here. Um, you know we get inquisitive when it's time to get into the smoking section. Whoa, I like that. We like to get curious. Curious. I'm curious <laughs> about you, baby. But today's <laughs> query, the question of the day is, is marijuana canceled? I hope not, the blunt's not canceled. Though. Oh, you shit, I wasn't saying? passing it, huh? You was waiting I for mean, me to get my I line off so you could go ahead and... You know I what? Mean, I do listen, be holding the shit. Listen, listen. If they said I puff, know. puff, pass, but I puff, 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 you puff, 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 saying? pass. Just let a nigga know. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, is marijuana canceled, though? Is it? So when I say is marijuana canceled, I'm talking about the word. The word marijuana. Is it canceled? Is it racist? That's kind of a question that's been popping up. Probably... I would say the last eight to 10 years or so since, you know, they've been talking about all of this legalization of mm-hmm, marijuana, mm-hmm. Recre- recreationally, medically, medicinally. Um, it's been coming up. You know, the history of marijuana in the United States is a little bit sticky. 
You know what I mean? Like they got they got a little bit of a Sticky tumultuous icky. relationship. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't always great. You know, the Prohibition era, Indeed. the early uh, what was it, nineteen tens, twenties, thirties. It was you know they had a lot going on. It was a lot of depression going on. Depression era. People were looking for blame. Yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. immigrants. You know, Mexico had their civil war going on at the same time. A lot of people were migrating. From Mexico, it was a big influx of immigrants. Hmm. Similar, you know, you hear the stories now, like, nah, you know, in America, say, like we nah, don't like foreigners coming through yeah, and doing it on land. Even though we all Mind foreigners. you, the origin of the United States <laughs> was much. some foreigners coming over and saying, hey, we want to come over here now. So that's pretty much, it's crazy how that cycle goes, and it's still, you see it prevalent today. Um, but that's kind of what went down in, like, the 1930s. You had... Um, uh, you know, a lot of people kind of talking down on marijuana, associating it with black and brown people, of course, mm -hmm. um, saying it was, you know, you know, demonizing it, saying uh, it was turning white women into lustful women over men of color, people of color, and the jazz smoker, the jazz players were smoking it at the time. It wasn't popular. The Mexican immigrants were bringing it over the border and smoking it, so they were just like, you know, associating it with Schedule 1 drugs, similar to, like, heroin, opioids, shit like that. Like, it was crazy. That's how the spark of it. If you Google reefer madness, you'll see, like, it was a whole propaganda campaign slandering and trying to get marijuana up out of here. Um, and we actually touched on in an earlier episode where we were talking about the origins and, you know, how it went down when marijuana was still illegal. Um, you know, we even had this cycle with uh, alcohol. Alcohol was illegal at one point. And now it's legal. So that's kind of, you know, the bumps and bruises these things take. Um, but that left a bit of taste in a lot of people's mouth because, you know, Harry uh, Anslinger, if you know about him, he was heavy on it, trying to come down on weed, heavy trying to, he was using marijuana as, you know, one of the things, because it has like a Latin, a Mexican feel, uh, tonality to it. It's based from Mexico. Um, they actually spell it with an H instead of the J. Right, right, but right, right. But it was really descriptive of the way you were consuming uh, the TAC and the cannabis because you were consuming it by smoking it. So that's what the marijuana was. Um, so it wasn't necessarily a racial thing, but he turned it and tried to put it onto them and, you know, use that to demonize it to, you know, middle white America. And that's kind of how it popularized. But that wasn't the origin. That wasn't the basis of it. So now it's the talk today. People are saying, okay, so should we just cancel it out, not use it, replace it with cannabis instead, which is actually the 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 formal term of the actual plant. Uh, cannabis sativa is the name of the plant. Indeed. And marijuana just describes the areas of the plant that has the most high uh, compulsive of THC and those are like the buds that you actually smoke so it is a difference between marijuana and cannabis um, but you know a lot of people that are making these laws and trying to push this legislation are saying okay is it racist should we be thinking about this should we remove it from the text should we use cannabis now instead um, and you know that's a that's like one of those things it's comparable to you know say like nigga the n word people reclaiming certain things that were once a derogatory statement or looked at as a negative and you know embracing it it's become a communal and the people who you know were the subjects or the main targets of that word are being given the right to determine whether or not you know it's passable whether or not who can use it who can say it when and where and mm -hmm. I think that's kind of how it should be at the end of the day it is what it is you can't necessarily erase the word from history that's not how you know language works a word comes into the lexicon it is what it is absolutely um, you can't erase it and kind of erasing it is diminishing you know all of the things that came with that word all of the people who suffered under that word that's part of history it's always there um, it's just how you use it going forward and I think it's the same thing you look at with marijuana. Like, is it racist? Um, that's probably the most popular term for weed, THC, um, however you want to call it, marijuana. Like, everybody calls it that. At this point, you can't get rid of it. Um, but even the word that they're suggesting, cannabis, that ain't so clear out the water itself because apparently the botanist that uh, came and first identified the cannabis sativa plant and named it that um, was a Swedish racist uh, that came out with uh, his own project. Um, what was the name of it? Human, 
what was it, Humera Superior, something like that. But he was pretty much breaking down the human race into like four sub races and classifying and like, you know, giving each race a rank. And of course, you, you could kind of almost guesstimate how that went. Um, but this is the person who, you know, first came up with cannabis sativa. So here they are saying marijuana is racist and we should go down to cannabis. But the origin of cannabis is also coming from somebody who was. So everything is fucking racist at the end of the day. <laughs> like, that's kind of what it boils down mm-hmm. to. Like, but, you know, we're progressing. So we progressed from old and, you know, older times when we were a lot more harsh. We had a lot more uh, closeted, antiquated views on a lot of topics. So how do we progress from that without still, you know, losing that history, losing what we progress from? Because mm-hmm. um, that's important to maintain. Um, with all that said and done, though, how you feel about marijuana? Did you ever know, like, there was any negative connotation as far as, you know, it being associated to Mexicans or people of color? Or? Absolutely. I think that's, that's for, as far as what I know, like, marijuana, that's, <laughs> it, the, the name itself, I didn't know the, or, I knew the origin of the name had a Hispanic term, but I always knew that it was kind of, like, demonized, and it was, that's how it became a Schedule One drug in the first place. Yeah. Because, you know, once they... Once they was able to pin it on a minority group, you know how it is. The U.S. always scapegoating somebody for yeah, something for the decline, for the decline of the country as they perceive it. So, yeah. like we always know how it goes. Like that's how it is with crack. That's how it is with all these kind of drugs out here. Not saying that they're the same thing, but you know, it. The way marijuana got lumped in, and then the funny part about it is like it's from the earth and it was used at one point as medicine yes so like how it got how it got demonized is just a product of the way american culture and the way american norms change and just like you said like alcohol you know, it was a whole thing with prohibition banning alcohol. Like it was the same kind of thing. Like yeah. it this is it. What? Fettuccine with the team, we get in lit. What? Got it rolled up. Now who really trying to hit? What? Puff, puff, then we pass. Then we pass.